<clears throat> Good morning. Father time just keeps moving forward. December 9th, Thursday, getting close to the weekend. kind of plans everybody has but good morning to all of you this morning and uh, good to see you on here <clears throat> we, uh, you know I, I was reading the news I, I can't find I cannot find anything on the trial of this Max Maxwell Gal or whatever her name was. Remember, she was the one that worked for Jeffrey Epstein. You know, she's on trial this week, and uh, I, I, I haven't, I have not found anything on that. As a matter of fact, there was a there was a guy on Twitter. They said that was just giving reports every day of what was going on on trial, and they deleted his account. So. Um, yeah. So I have no idea. I, I I don't know the typical, you know, press of the day. They'll hide all of that out, you know, from us and um but have no idea uh what's going on with this gal. And I, I did the only thing I've read is that um Alec Baldwin's name came up and he was on the list. So that came out in trial. So, um, Mr. Baldwin, he's just, uh, he's crashing and burning, isn't he? I mean, he is on his way, way down. So, but that's the only thing I've heard. I have no idea uh, what they're going to do everything they can to keep everybody's name out of that one. But and then I, I don't know, you know, uh, BDB, he's trying to, uh, get this gal on the FCC uh, uh, that her name is Gigi Schoen or Son or whatever. And I, I mean, she she's so liberal. She's, I think she's a professing communist. And um, she, uh, they're trying to get her put on the board for the FCC, which would have control of the internet. And um, she's, you know, Obviously, she's willing and wanting to shut down conservative networks. And um, then I just heard that I was reading this article that Newsmax came out endorsing her. And and, and uh, find out, all you got to do is just follow the money. You know, here's Newsmax, supposed to be some conservative, uh, uh, you know, bastion of news. And... And along with what's the other one? OHN, OAH, or OHN, or OHN, I think it is. And and um, that they finally came out and said she she doesn't need to be in this position. But you find out that that there's speculation that the reason that these conservative places are endorsing a communist is because that she'd made a deal saying that she wouldn't bother them, but that she was going after Sinclair Broadcasting, which is their competitor. Follow the money, right? Just follow the money. And it's just, I don't know, Jed. Anyway, and so, you know, Newsmax, OHN, both of them, you can't hide the public announcement that they support her, so it's not made up. But I just find it sad, you know, even those areas... Just money. Why? Why does money change people so much? You know why? Why? Why do you know people just think that that money is everything? And it, it just all I don't know. It just changes people, doesn't it? So, and then being a liberal really messes up your mind. I'm sorry, but it, it does. It just messes up your mind. That uh, mayor lunatic of. Lunatic Lightfoot of of uh, Chicago, uh, she came out in a in a uh, press release yesterday, or I don't know interview or whatever, 
and uh, uh, has said that the reason that the the crime rate is so bad uh, in Chicago with the uh, with the uh, retailers is it's their fault. It's the retailers' fault. They they shouldn't be advertising their goods, and they they need to lock their stuff up at night and they need to get their own private uh, security guards and it's their fault. So if they would do these things, then uh, it, the, the crime rate would go down. And I, <laughs> I tell you, and, and here's, here's the thing. So they, they uh, the police officers go out and they arrest these people they bring them to jail, and within hours, these nut balls are let let loose again because of the liberal DAs that they have. I don't know if you saw in New York City, but um, Fox News had a Christmas tree out in front of their building. This nut job came in there and set it on fire. Well, he's already out. I mean, they they let him out, and you know, L.A. County, the the DA out there, has taken great pride in. And we're all about reform, and, and their idea of reform is that uh, police officers uh, arrest these people, and then they let them out. And I got news for you guys. We got one of those nutbags as a DA here in Morgan County. I mean, he keeps, the, he or she, I don't even know who it is, you know? What was it, the last one they had got fired because she was doing drugs, or was she an assistant DA? I don't know, but uh, I'm telling you, the, the liberal mindset you know, we got that one guy let out probably 10 times for stealing the from the catalytic converters. And we, we got, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I don't, uh, oh man. <laughs> Let's just get everybody wound up on a Thursday, right? <laughs> Some LA County school, I saw they are, they are, uh, uh, given the, the, the J-A-B uh, to kids without uh, par parental permission. I mean, and then they're uh, offering them free pizza if they'll do this and, and not to tell their parents. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know what's sad is they think they're smart. Uh, I mean, they, uh, and there is like zero common sense with these characters. And we're, we're going to, we're going to slap murderers on the hand and say, Hey, you promise to do better? Yes. Do you promise to vote for me in the next election? Yes. Okay. This guy's been reformed. Let's turn him loose. And <laughs> uh, they're the party that Charles Manson votes for. They should be proud of themselves, right? <laughs> uh, oh, man. All right. Enough of that nonsense, isn't it? <clears throat> so, uh, God knows. And uh, God, nothing surprises God. And, uh, you know, all, all of this has happened before in the past. And, and um, you know, God just wants us to be faithful. And we will, uh, we will continue to stand and uh, enjoy the blessings that God gives us. And we, we know that. And, and God's got all of this. And uh, we you really just got to, I mean, it is sad. And, and some of it's disheartening. Some of it's actually downright scary, right? But you just got to know that uh, God's got your back and God's got your front. And he's there with us and we'll just walk with him and, and trust him and, and it will be okay, right? So Proverbs 9, 11, uh, here it tells us, it says, for by me, that's by wisdom, remember? And so for by me, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. And, you know, God, God's just promised us wonderful things in, in our obedience to him and, he gave us this promise also in 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 uh, um, <clears throat> all right, and sorry about that yeah you know that uh, um, that that had absolutely nothing uh, 
to do with why your son died, you know, and that, that is ridiculousness. And whoever told you that their God is the government and, um, they, they truly need to, they, they need to apologize for the stupidity of what they just said. And, um, that, that's terrible that they would, uh, say something like that. Don't, don't ever believe that in, in, in uh, you know, it was a it was a tragedy what what took place with your son, and uh, it had absolutely nothing. I mean, the 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 vaccine wasn't even out yet when your son was killed. So don't don't listen to their lies. That's that's just the devil chirping. And uh, so you you hang in there, all right. And um, and remember what he tells us. You know, we, we saw that in. In, in Proverbs, John 10 and verse 10, it goes right along with it. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what the devil does. And, and right now, God is set back and, and letting him uh, run around and beat his chest right now and spike the ball and, and think that, that he's got control of things. And, and we see where the world's at right now. And and we know that there are many that are believing his lies and, and he comes to steal and to kill and destroy. And, and we know that, but we don't follow him. We follow, we follow Christ, right? And it tells us here, and it says, Jesus said, and I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And, and, I, and I do believe that it's more than just eternal life. And look, just eternal life is enough. I mean, it's, I shouldn't say just, I, I, I say, if, if only that's what we get, then that is plenty e eternal life. But he gives us more than that. Remember what 911 Proverbs 911 for by me, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. I uh, hear he'll give us life more abundantly. He, he'll give us what matters most. And, and he gives us much of it, abundantly, more than we can ever expect. And we, we need to, to look to him and trust him and walk with him. And, and, and uh, he gives us what matters most. And, and we can praise him and, and walk with him and, and uh, how good that is to know. And, and so we, we just follow him. And, and, and I saw some other promises. And Isaiah 30 verse 18 this morning says, therefore will the Lord wait that they that he may be gracious unto you. You, you know, sometimes uh, God waits and, and God allows these crazy things to happen. And, and we, we're praying that God would deliver us from these things. And, and he keeps telling us you need to wait. And sometimes he, de he delays in his deliverance. And and uh, it, it's okay. Don't despair. You just keep staying on your knees and asking God for, for deliverance and, and to let you see uh, the things that he gives you that matters the most. And so, sometimes we lose what, what really matters to us and, and uh, all, in, all in God's love and, and all in God's sovereignty. And, and I don't know why your your son uh, had to die at such an early age, other than I know that we live in a in an evil world, right? And and everybody on here would would uh, uh, say the same. And and we know that it's an evil and it's a wicked world. And you know what? And sometimes uh, there are those that that are taken out early, and that and that's why it's so important that. Uh, the the promises that we have are eternal promises. And yes, sometimes he gives us long lives. Sometimes he doesn't, but here on earth, but he gives us eternal life and, and he gives us the uh, abundant promises of, of, of an abundant life. And while we're here, we can enjoy uh, wonderful things that God gives us. And, and uh, so we, we just trust him. And then he said a little further on in Isaiah in chapter 32, verse 18, my people shall dwell in quiet resting places. You know, when, when God gives us these things and, and God finally comes out and, and, and we start realizing the abundant life that he's given us, that, that we realize that our life shall be increased 
and our life be increased. I don't believe just means numbers in a, in a long life. I don't think it means that at all. It, it will be full. Our life will just be full. And, and we, we can see how God used us greatly and, and has blessed us. And uh, I mean, it just, it, it awakens us to the eternal side of things. And, and so never forget those things. And, and remember the, the great and wonderful, tremendous eternal promises that, that God gives us. And then here's a promise in Psalm 128. You read this today. And all I said was the abundant life. I mean, it is. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. So let's just walk in his ways. And, and, and he says, because of this, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Let's make sure that the labor of our hands are are, are doing the labor of God, right? And, and, and when we're doing the labor of God and doing that which is eternal, then we reap the eternal dividends, right? That's what he's telling us. And, and we'll eat the labor of our hands. Thy, and here's some of that labor. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Your, your marriage will be strong. You, you will, thy children, like olive plants round about thy table. You'll, you'll see the blessings of your family and, and your children. And, and you'll see them trusting the Lord and walking with God and because we're we're walking with God ourselves, and behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. You know, if there's one thing to fear, it's God, and we we need to fear Him. That if first of all, we need to we need to understand that I don't care how good you are, you have sin in your life, and you must deal with sin. Every one of us has that same problem, and so. You need to deal with sin. Well, there's only one way to deal with sin with God, and that's through Jesus. And Jesus, that's why he died on the cross. That's why he rose again the third day and ascended into heaven to show us that his sacrifice was sufficient for the sins of the world. And you, by faith, need to understand the the, the wickedness of your sin and, and bring you to a mindset where you realize that you need a savior just like everybody else and you call on Jesus to be your savior and and he gives you eternal life and and then uh, and and we we fear God because of that judgment that's coming look these characters that are living their lives without God and and uh you know thinking that they got things under control and they're seeking this wealth and power and thinking that ruling a people is going to give them great happiness um, you know what? They, they may have all the riches of this world, but one day they're going to die and go to hell. And they're going to have absolutely nothing but regret in their lives. And we, we don't want that. I don't want that for anybody. I don't want it for any of you guys either. And, and, and so fear God. Fear the judgment of God and, and turn and, and trust Jesus as your Savior. I want to see all of you in heaven. Let's have these devotions in heaven someday together, right? And, and when you know him as your savior, then praise the Lord, let's just obey him and, and see the blessings that he gives us. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. And nothing better, nothing better than the peace of God, nothing better than the abundant life that that God gives us, and and let's have that. Let let's let's uh, let, let's understand the the preciousness of of just following God and and seeing Him uh, deliver us, to secure us, to to keep us safe in in this crazy world, to have the right mentality that we ought to have, and and uh, and thank Him for the promises that He gives us in His Word. You know, it tells us, I read this in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Well, you know what the vision is? It's the word of God. The, and, and people that don't have the word of God, people perish. Well, you know, I think it's scary. There, there was a time when in the Old Testament where God said that 
There, there was no vision to the people in Samuel's time. There was a time when it was real quiet. Nobody was hearing from God. There are 400 dark years there where uh, some craziness took place between the Old Testament and New Testament. And, and ritualism became dominant uh, religion of the day and, and uh, Judaism and Catholicism and, you know, the, the ritualistic ideas of, of pleasing God and, and the work salvation became more dominant. And, and we see that uh, it was during that time when, when uh, people weren't uh, following the word of God. And, and so God removes it from many of those. There was always a remnant that believed God and, and had the word and, and thankful for that. But I, I'm telling you that where there is no vision, the people perish. Well, sometimes we need to realize that we are the, the word of God that they're going to be reading and, and they're going to look at our lives and, and, and they're going to watch the way that we live. They're, they're going to hear our conversations and where, where do our conversations lead? Are, are we going to lead them back to Christ or are we, you know, leading them into worldly carnal ideas? And, and we, we don't want that, right? We, we want to and uh, show them the abundant life. We want to tell them about the abundant life, and we want to tell them that that comes through the Savior, right? And and just the great opportunities that we have. And he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Look, our obedience to God always brings happiness and and blessedness and blessings from God, comfort from God, peace from God. That's that's how we get. That's how we get peace in our lives. And so let's let's look to him and, and uh, trust him. And so those are some of the things that I had. And, and one last thing, and, and yep, we're moving along just about right, is Revelation. I started reading Revelation, getting ready to finish up the Word of God for this year. I've read through the Bible. I'm just missing a little bit here. By the end of the year, I'd be done with this, Lord willing, and Get ready to do it all over again every year. I just read through the Bible every year. I challenge you to do that and get a get a Bible reading and read through the Bible once a year. Just don't get behind. It, you, you get behind, you're going to suffer and uh, it'll be hard, hard to, to get caught up. So what it does is it'll make you diligent to set time to do this and, 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 uh, Good. I mean, I'm glad your dad did that. I mean, we all need to do that. We we need to sit down and and get an idea of what the Bible is all about. And it's the perfect word of God. It, it you'll never go wrong doing that. So but I'll just give you a couple of things. I'm reading through Revelation and so if you want to read through Revelation, we're at the point right now that you can read a chapter a day and you'll finish out the year uh by reading the book of Revelation. So if you want to, I'll give you something. Maybe I'll try to give something every day, uh, a little bit of, of each chapter. So chapter one, John starts having the vision, right? And, and he mentions some things. In verse four, he talks about the seven spirits. Those seven spirits represent the completion of the Holy Spirit, the, the, uh, uh, the, the perfection of the Holy Spirit of God. That's the seven spirits that are talked about that are before the throne in, in chapter verse four, chapter one. So seven spirits are the Holy Spirit of God. But then it also talks about the, the uh, seven golden candlesticks. Those are the churches. There's seven churches that he's going to direct. And to, to think about this, our church is the candlestick for Morgan County. Yeah, there are other churches and, and there are uh, some of them that, that preach the gospel. Very few, very few of them preach the gospel. Don't, don't uh, uh, be so naive that you think that every one of them are, are preaching the gospel. They're not. They're preaching a different gospel. If they preach that you, you have to be saved through your works or through, through ritualism or traditions, you, you're saved only by your faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. And so, so don't, don't be so foolish to think they all are. They're not. And people are going to say, well, everybody just so different in what they believe the word of God says. Well, they wouldn't be if they 
wouldn't fall in love with tradition and ritualism. God doesn't teach that. And, and when he did in the Old Testament law, he was showing them, the law was showing them in its perfection that you cannot live according to the law and tradition and expect to please God. Doesn't work. That's why they had to make the sacrifices. So, and so anyway, moving on. But seven golden candlesticks are the churches. Well, we're, we're a candlestick. We're a light. Let us make sure that we're the light. Let's make sure that we're, we're the light in our family. Let's make sure that, that we are shedding the light for our family members and telling them and sharing the gospel and sharing the gospel with everybody around us. And, and, and then the, the seven stars are the seven pastors of those churches. And so, and it's not some board, it's not some group of, of board of, of elders that some want to try to say it is. It was a pastor, a leader of that church, the, the under shepherd of that church, and one that was called by God to be the under shepherd of that church. And, and uh, pastors and deacons, that's it. And, and, uh, the, the deacons were to, to assist in taking care of things of the church, but it's the pastor that's the under shepherd and the seven stars, that's who it's talking about. You know, there are times where it says that God removes a candlestick and, and he removes a church. And, and a lot of times that's caused by, by that, that church going south and their ideas. And there, there's one in Indiana, I just saw, uh, a Methodist church in Indiana that this pastor was on an HBO series about transgenders and 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 he came out as a some goofy transgender. I'm sorry, but that's it's an abomination of God and it's totally against the, the scripture and there's no way you can be a minister of the gospel of Christ and believe that junk. And so anyway, that's what we have today. I'll quit on that. We'll uh move on uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, and uh, uh, Lord willing, be back on here and getting ready for the weekend. It's going to be a great day at church, and, and uh, it's going to be a good day today. It's a beautiful day out, sun shining. It's been exceptionally warm and, and cold in the mornings, but then warms up throughout the day, and, and uh, let's just go out. Tell someone about Jesus today, and remember the abundant life that God's given you. And just don't don't get down, but let's keep looking up, right? Looking to the hills and there's where we'll find our help. God bless you guys.